Hello and welcome to this new series of videos in which I'm going to be showing you how to create an online store with Nox.js, Firebase and Stripe. In this video we're going to be setting up the project and creating a front end for our store. We're also going to be creating a persistent shopping cart to add and remove products from it. Stick around to the end of the series of videos, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content coming up. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is install Node.js. For this, go to the Node website. For Windows users, it's really simple. Just download and use the installer. For Linux and Mac users, there's other ways of doing this as well. I think you should try Homebrew. It's really simple to install. Just go to their website and copy the installation command, paste it in your terminal, and that's it. Then you just run brew install node and you've got node in your computer. Then in your command line, run node dash dash version and it should print the node version. Now node comes with npm installed. npm is the node package manager that we're gonna use to bring all the libraries that we need like Stripe, Firebase, Noxt and more. Now with npm and node installed, go ahead and run the command to create the Nox project. So in our terminal, we type in npx noxi init and then the name of your project. In my case, that's gonna be online store nox3. Then we see the into the folder it just created and we type in npm install. And to run this project, we type in npm run dev. In my case, I'm opening the folder with Visual Studio Code, which is my text editor. And as you can see, here's all the files and folders for my project to work correctly. First thing I'm going to do with these files is open app.view and delete the boilerplate code instead of Nux welcome and I'm going to type in Nux page. And this will be replaced with the content of the current page we're in in our site. Then I'm going to add a pages folder and in this folder I'm going to add a file called index.view. Here's where my products are going to be. I'm not going to use it yet. I'll just leave it there and come back to it later. Now I'm going to install the bootstrap library and this contains a lot of components that we can use in our application like cards, buttons, alerts, modals and more. To install it in Nux3 it's very simple. Go ahead and open the nux.config.ts file and in here we're going to add a property to the configuration called meta. Now inside the meta object we're going to add a property called link and this is going to be an array of objects. We're just going to add one object with the properties rel stylesheet and href with the link to the bootstrap CSS. Then again in the meta object we're going to add another property called script that is also going to be an array and it's going to contain an object with the property source and that's going to be the link to the bootstrap javascript file. Once we do this we have bootstrap installed in our application. Now we're going to create a new file inside a new folder called components and the file is going to be named the navbar.view. Now every file that you put in the components folder is going to be automatically imported in every other view component. So let's go into the app.view file. In here we're going to apply a container class to the div and we're going to add the navbar component as well. Now let's open the navbar component. I'm going to create a template tag and then using the bootstrap examples I'm going to create a navbar here. Starting with the nav element, we add the classes and in this case I'm going to use a dark background for the navbar. Then inside the nav element goes a div element with the container fluid class. And then inside first we're going to add a nox link that is going to be pointing to the home page and it's going to serve kind of like the logo in the navbar. Then we're going to add a button and another collapsible element. These two were taken straight from the bootstrap documentation and what they do is make the navbar responsive in mobile phones. Then the documentation says that the buttons are going to be an unordered list. So then inside we add two nav items. One's going to be another Nox link pointing to home and the other one is going to be a simple button element that we're going to use to open the shopping cart. Now let's go ahead and create the shopping cart component. Go ahead and add a new file called shopping cart inside the components folder. Then in the bootstrap documentation you're going to find the off canvas component. Scroll down to find the right side of canvas 
and then copy the code, come back to your shopping cart component, insert a div element, and then just paste the code you just copied from the bootstrap documentation. Then get the code from the button, go to the navbar component, and then below the on order list, insert a div element with the class dflex. And in this div element, we're gonna paste the button from the shopping cart. Then go to your app.view file and add the shopping cart component there. Now go ahead and run your project by typing in npm run dev in your terminal. And if you go to your browser, in my case it's localhost port 3000, you should see an empty page with a navbar and a button that opens an off canvas on the right side of the screen. Now we're gonna list some products in our index page. So go ahead and open your index.view file and we're gonna start building our component by creating a script tag. In this script tag, we're gonna export default our view object, then create a data object and add the products array. And in the products array I'm gonna add four objects to use as an example and these objects are all gonna contain a UUID to identify them, a name, a description, a price, and a photo URL. Right now I'm hard coding these objects but they should come from an API call or from Firebase and I'm actually gonna do that in my next video. Right now I'm gonna work with these to create my persistent shopping cart. Once we have the script tag done we're gonna go to the HTML part by opening a template tag. Then we're gonna add a bootstrap container that a row and then a call md4. This means the size of the div is going to be 4 out of 12. Then we're going to add a cart element with a margin bottom of 3. Then once we have the cart element, I'm going to add a v4 to replicate this for every product. The v4 is going to give me the current product and an index. Then I'm going to add the key attribute where I'm going to use this index. So the keys are going to be product 0, product 1, product 2, and so on. Now I'm going to use the product information. So inside the cart element, insert an image tag. This image is going to use the class cart image top and the source is going to be product dot photo url then below the image i'm gonna add the card body then a header 5 with the class card title that is going to contain the product name then a paragraph tag with the class card text that is going to contain the product description and finally a div element with the class d grid and inside a button with the classes button button outline primary and the text is going to be add to card now if you take a look into your browser you should see all the product cards displayed now let's go back to our index.view file and create a method section and we're going to add a method called add to cart that receives a parameter product. Then we're going to go to the button and add a view click event that calls the add to cart method and passes in the product information. Now in the data section of the component, we're gonna declare a shopping cart array. Then we need to program the logic so that whenever the add to cart method gets called, we check if the product was already in the cart and if it isn't, it gets pushed into the shopping cart array. But if it was already there, the amount property in the product object just gets increased by one. And for that, we first declare an exist variable to false by default. Then we're gonna loop through the shopping cart and on each pass, we're gonna check whether the current card item UUID is the same as the added product UUID. And if it is, we're gonna modify the amount property of the card item by setting it to the current amount plus one. Then we're gonna set the exist variable to true because we did find it and we're gonna break the loop. Right after the loop, we're gonna check whether the exist variable ended up as true or false. And in case it's false, we're gonna push a new object to the shopping cart with the product information and the amount set to one. Now go to your browser and open the view dev tools, navigate to your component, and you're gonna find the shopping cart array empty. As soon as you click on any add to cart button, the shopping cart array is gonna get updated. And now every product that we add to the cart is gonna get added to the shopping cart array. But if we reload the page, the array is gonna be empty again, so it's not persisting the information. What we need to do now is save the shopping cart array to the local storage of your browser, and also retrieve it every time the component is mounted or the page is reloaded. First, to save it to local storage, we're gonna create a watch section in the component, then listen to changes on the shopping cart array. For this, we also need to set the deep property to true. Then we just call the local storage.setItem function. We set the key to shopping 
greeting card and the value to json.stringify new value and this will convert the array to a string and save it to local storage then to retrieve it just create a mounted function and inside we're going to retrieve the shopping cart from the local storage or simply an empty array and then parse it into a javascript array and then save it in the shopping cart data variable now go into your browser and open the application tab in the developer tools then open the local storage and you're going to find that whenever you add a new product to the cart the value of this property gets updated and even if you reload the page the information is still there all right now let's go ahead and list these products in the shopping cart component and for that first move the shopping cart component call from the navbar into the index.view component you can put it inside the root container element and it should work exactly the same Then add a vModel attribute and passing the shopping cart data property. Once you do that, go to your shopping cart component and open a script tag. Export the default view component object, add the props, and in the props array, we're gonna add a model value which is gonna contain the shopping cart products which is passed to the component. Once we do that, we can now go to the off canvas body and add a new div with the class cart and margin bottom three. We're gonna add a v4 in this element that is gonna loop through the model value and it's gonna give me a product and an index. Then I'm gonna add the key attribute using the index. Then inside I'm gonna add a row and inside the row I'm gonna add a column of size MD4 and a column of size MD8. Inside the first column I'm gonna add an image tag with the class image fluid and rounded start and the source is gonna be the product that photo URL. Well, then in the second column, I'm going to add a div element with a class card body. And inside of the card body, I'm going to add a header 5 with a class card title that contains the product name. Then a p tag with a class card text that contains the product description. And then another p tag with a class card text that contains the product price and the product amount. Finally, I'm going to add a div with the class d grid that contains a secondary button that is going to allow me to remove the product from the cart. In this button, I'm going to add the click event with the method remove from cart and I'm going to pass in the product. Then in the method section of the component, I'm going to add the remove from cart method receiving the product as a parameter. Now what this function should be doing is finding the product we are removing in the model value which is the shopping cart array. Once we find it we need to subtract one to the amount of the given item and then in case the amount goes to zero we just remove it completely from the array. And once we have the new shopping cart array, we're gonna emit an event called update model value. And this event is gonna update the value of the shopping cart array also in the parent component, which was the index.view. And once it is updated in the index.view, the watcher we set before is gonna also update it in the local storage and therefore persist all the changes. Now we go to the browser, you'll see that we can add products, see them in the shopping cart and also remove them one by one until they get to zero and then they get removed completely from the shopping cart. Okay, and finally in the shopping cart component, I'm gonna go ahead and add a computer property called total sum where we're gonna set a sum variable to zero. Then we're gonna loop through every item in the shopping cart and we're gonna sum the price of each item multiplied by its amount. And this is gonna give us the total sum of every item in the cart. Then we just return the sum and now we can print it in the HTML right beside the shopping cart title. And as you can see, our shopping cart is done. Now this shopping cart we're gonna use in the next videos of the series, and we're gonna end up with a fully functional online store. So stick around for that. I'm gonna leave you the link to the blog post of this same tutorial, as well as the link to the GitHub repository with all the code that I'm writing. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>